Hello everybody, today we have my OnePlus 7T again and I'm going to show you how to unlock the bootloader. The instructions in this video should be fairly universal for all Android phones and I'll go over where these instructions might be a little bit different depending on what kind of device you have. This of course is a T-Mobile version of the phone and for that you need an unlock code. This is a OnePlus device so it requires an unlock token, a binary file. If you have Motorola then those usually require an unlock code. It's a little bit different from device to device and international versions of phones usually don't require any code whatsoever. It's just because these are T-Mobile for some reason they have their stuff locked down. Before we get started be sure to take good backups of your phone. Everything in this video most of the steps will erase the phone at least once over the course of this video. I don't have anything on this phone, so that's not a big deal for me, but be sure to take those backups. Another warning, anytime you do something in your bootloader, you could brick your phone. Don't do this if you're not willing to sacrifice your device or if you don't know what you're doing. This is a really good thing for people who are more experienced. With that said, if you make a mistake, don't panic. If something goes wrong, I do have a video on the MSM tool specifically for the OnePlus 7T on how to restore it and there's similar software out there for Motorola devices as well. So as we get started, things you'll need, you'll need a factory unlocked Android phone. This one is factory unlocked, carrier unlocking doesn't count so be careful when you purchase an Android device if you want to de-google it that it is factory unlocked and not just carrier unlocked. You'll need a USB cable. This phone is already plugged in. You'll need the latest Android tools, also known as ADB and Fastboot. I will provide a link in the description with the most up-to-date tools as of time of posting. Sometimes these go a little bit out of date. I do try to keep them updated, but it's not guaranteed. Just be sure to go to that thread and find the most recent posting for the most recent version of ADB and Fastboot. And the fourth thing you need, as mentioned earlier in this video, for T-Mobile you will need an unlock token or an unlock code. This is something you may need but you may not and we'll go over that part in the video. The fifth and last thing that you'll need for this process is your device IMEI and you can get that by going into settings, going down to about phone, and then clicking on status. The information will be right here under IMEI. Of course this is going to be blurred out on the video that you're looking at because this is very private information. So let's go ahead and get started. To unlock the device, first thing we need to do is go into the settings and you want to scroll down to the very bottom and click about phone. Here you'll need to find the software version and click this seven times. Now it says you are now a developer. From here we go back, we go to system, and we find developer options. It's right here near the bottom of the screen. And you want to enable OEM unlocking and this is what's important for factory unlocking your phone and USB debugging. For USB debugging, sometimes this menu will pop up right away. Sometimes you have to send an ADB command and we will go over how to do that ADB command in just a moment. Just select allow from this device always and then click allow. The next thing we need to do is we need to open up a terminal window or a PowerShell window or a command prompt window in Windows or Linux. I'm of course using Linux right here and I'm going to open it in this folder. In Windows you can just type in CMD at the top here or you can shift right click and open up a PowerShell prompt. Since I'm in Linux, I can just right click and open terminal and it will open a terminal for us. What I'm going to do right here is I'm going to promote myself to super admin. 
all of the instructions for ADB in Linux require this sudo command before them. That's not required for Windows, but I'm going to promote myself to root privileges so that you don't have to wait for me or watch me type in sudo a whole bunch of times. For the Linux users out there, I know root permissions can be dangerous just because of the ability to delete critical system files, but we're not going to be touching any of those types of commands. So there's no reason to panic here. Now that we're logged in as root, we can take a look at everything that's in this folder and we have those instructions here. Now we can type in adb reboot bootloader. And you can see that the phone has rebooted and it's gone into the bootloader. And of course the bootloader is shown as locked right here. Now the next thing we need is we need either an unlock code or an unlock token. To get this for a OnePlus device, you need to go to the OnePlus website and I'll leave a link in the description down below and you'll need to register or log in. Once you log in, you will be able to go over to a form that looks just like this. And you can see that you can select your device, you can, and in this case, this is a OnePlus 7T, and we'll need our serial number, our IMEI, an email address for contact, and an unlock code. It's a little bit different on the Motorola site. Actually, I like their form a little bit more than OnePlus. It's a little bit more straightforward, it has more instructions, and they also give you your unlock code basically immediately, whereas OnePlus makes you wait a full seven days. I think in my case it took seven days and 30 minutes for them to send me the notification that my unlock binary file was ready to download. We're in the bootloader, so we need to type in a command, fastboot oem get unlock code. Again, I'm doing this as root. If you're not doing it as root in Linux, then you need to type in sudo. In Windows, you are good to go. And of course, I have the latest ADB and Fastboot installed. You can see that this gives us the serial number for the phone and the unlock code that is required to get our unlock token. We're going to take our serial number and our code here and we're gonna place it into the form. I've already done this, so I'm just going to kind of demonstrate what you need to do. And I'm going to block out these numbers because I don't know how secret they're supposed to be. Type in an email address at fakeemail.com. And now we need the IMEI. This will be found on the device packaging I spliced in some footage on how to find that information on your device at the beginning of this video. Once this form is filled out, you click I acknowledge that I may void the warranty of my device by unlocking the bootloader and you'll go ahead and submit. After seven days from OnePlus, they will send you an email where you can go to this page and you can download your .bin file. And of course, this looks like this right here, unlockcode.bin. I'm going to cancel this really quick because I already have this in the folder right here. Again, with T-Mobile, you don't have a binary file, you have an actual code. Once you have this code, then you will type in this command right here, which is fastboot OEM unlock and you'll hand off this variable here which is unlockcode.bin or if you have a Motorola version of a phone then it will just be the OEM unlock code and you will type in enter. At this point your phone will ask you if you want to unlock the bootloader. Of course we do so you'll use the volume navigation to navigate down this menu to yes unlock the bootloader And at this point, your phone will wipe itself and will reboot to the start. 
Now the instructions on this are pretty much the same whether you're on Android 9, 10, or 11. This phone of course is upgraded to 11 right now, but it was the same back when it was Android 10 for me. The part that does change is whether or not you have to hand off that unlock code binary file or the unlock code. I think that T-Mobile started doing this with their Android 10 version, so that variable does change a tiny bit from device to device and our phone is starting back up. That's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks for stopping by. This is Nick, signing out.